This is a breaking news alert from 6 News. Breaking news tonight out of Midland, Texas. Police there are searching for two gunmen they believe shot 20 people. This is according to our affiliate KOSA. Details are limited, but police are urging people to stay inside. One of them is believed to be at a movie theater, the other driving around on a highway. According to the city of Midland, a suspect shot a trooper and then several others afterwards. Stay with 6 News. We'll continue to follow this story and let you know when we learn more. Our other big story we're following tonight, people on the East Coast are embracing themselves as Hurricane Dorian barrels toward the U.S. Chief Meteorologist David Young is here for you in the Weather Center with the latest forecast on the storm. Hey, David. Hi. This is certainly going to be a big news story as well over the coming days. Powerful hurricane. Take a look at the uh, satellite images and what a beast this thing is. This is just a huge um, hurricane as it continues to churn its way to the northwest. Now, we'll put this in perspective for you, for you and there you can see uh, Florida kind of in the uh, side, uh, sights of this storm system. But as you look at the uh, track from the National Hurricane Center, winds this afternoon 150 miles per hour. It may briefly reach Category 5 status, and then as it starts to recurve, will it stay just offshore? Because anywhere in that red area is fair game, so certainly much of the southeastern U.S. Will be watching that, but there is at least a chance that it could stay out to sea, and that would be great news. Nonetheless, uh, folks are taking this hurricane very seriously. Kira? All right, David. Well, we're continuing our coverage tonight with Nicole Killian, and she's here for you now with a look at how preparations are going. Floridians are still boarding up homes and businesses while everyone waits for Dorian. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez declared a state of emergency on Saturday. We're hoping that our residents also remain vigilant. Suarez warned that even if Dorian doesn't make a direct hit in Florida, high winds and flooding would remain a threat. Forecasters say the highly unpredictable hurricane could move north to Georgia or the Carolinas before making landfall. If you're looking at these forecasts, you know, a bump in one direction or the other could have really significant ramifications in terms of impact. Here at Port Canaveral, operations are being limited, which means major vessels like these cruise ships have to be out by tonight. We're going to wait until we're sure it's, it's uh, going in another direction before we back off on any of the restrictions that we have right now. Residents in Brevard County are also keeping a close eye on the storm, but many are staying put for now despite mandatory evacuation orders. We feel safe in our home, so. We got a good, sturdy home. I'm not, we're not scared. We tried to book a motel and there was none available, so we're staying. In the Bahamas, where Dorian could strike on Sunday, the Prime Minister reminded residents that houses can be replaced, but lives cannot. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Cape Canaveral, Florida. Be sure to stay with 6 News and CBS News for the latest on Hurricane Dorian. We'll have updates on WLNS.com and a fresh track of the storm later tonight on 6 News at 11. And we're actually learning some breaking news or more news from that breaking news story we brought to you at the top of our show. We just learned that it's now being reported that 30 people have been injured in this mass shooting. That we're Sad situation. About. So we'll continue to be following that story and we still have more news to come on 6 News at 6. Stay with us. Back to the breaking news we're following out of Texas. Our affiliate in Midland, KOSA, is reporting that a person was taken into custody at a movie theater there. 30 people were shot. The New York Times is also reporting that two people were killed. Police will be holding a press conference soon and we'll have the very latest for you online and also watch our show at 6 News at 11. Live from WLNS TV, this is 6 News This Morning. Good morning, Mid Michigan. I'm Melissa Brennan. You're taking a live look at Lansing, where ice has made for dangerous driving. Authorities across Mid Michigan are saying you should stay off the roads if at all possible. We start with team coverage this morning. Dana White is live in Lansing for us, keeping an eye on conditions outside. But we start with meteorologist Emily Walls. She's in the Weather Center right now, tracking it all. Good morning, Emily. What can you tell us? Good morning, Melissa. Unfortunately, we're still dealing with freezing rain, some sleet out there this morning, and that's expected to continue as we go throughout the morning hours. So let's take a look at the satellite and radar. Many locations are getting a brief break from the precipitation, but it's not over yet. We still have a lot more in the way of rain off to our south, and as that runs into the colder air in place here in mid-Michigan, 
that's going to transition it into freezing rain, some sleet, and that's just going to add to the problems that we already have across the area. Zooming things back in again, we still have a winter storm warning in effect until noon today, especially north of I-94. Those of you along and south of 94, you have a winter weather advisory in effect until noon. Temperatures this morning, we are in the upper 20s to low 30s, and until we start to warm things up above freezing, we're just going to continue to add to the ice accumulation as this rain continues to move through. The Daily Planner, by midday, we're starting to see that transition from freezing rain over to all rain, and then we should all transition to plain all rain during the late afternoons. But it's going to take quite some time to melt all of this ice, so we're going to continue our team coverage now this morning with Dana White. She's here for you live in Lansing. Dana, how's it looking out there? Boxy. Emily, it has let up a little bit out here, but the ice rain is still coming down. But as you can see behind me, there is a car that slid off the freeway. So it is important for drivers to stay slow when they are headed out on the roads today. And I also just spoke with the Jackson County Sheriff's Office, who said they've had a few accidents this morning, but nothing major, just slides off the roads. So that does reinforce drivers to take it slow. MDOT says if you could stay off the road in general, that would be the best bet. And they've been working all night. We'll continue to work today to get those salt trucks out and get the road salted for drivers out there. So be sure to stay with us throughout the show. We will keep you updated on these conditions. Here for you in Lansing Live, Dana White, 6 News. Thanks, Dana. Well, Icy Roads made it a busy night for police in mid-Michigan. In Eaton County, deputies say one person was seriously hurt after their car was involved in a crash with two semis. It happened just after 2 o'clock this morning on westbound I-96 near Saginaw Highway. Deputies say Icy Roads are to blame, and the westbound side of the freeway will be shut down for a little while longer while police investigate. Two other people were injured, but they are expected to be okay. And this is video from a crash on Malcolm X Street near Aurelius Road in Lansing. Police say they responded to several crashes in the city throughout the night. Fortunately, there were no serious injuries in any of them. Well, if you do go out on the roads, it's important to take it slow because of the ice on the roads. AAA says you'll want to be very careful on bridges and overpasses. Do not use cruise control and try to stay in one lane as much as you can. You'll also want to leave about three times more space between your front bumper and the car ahead of you than you normally do. You finally make sure to leave yourself plenty of room to break. And remember, four wheel drive will not help you stop any faster. We've also been keeping an eye on power outages for you throughout the morning. This is a look at the consumer's energy outage map. Good news for people in the Grand Ledge area. Your lights are back on, but others near Holt went out just before 6 this morning. Consumers doesn't have a restoration time just yet, but those in Clarence Township area in Calhoun County should be back on before noon. But parts of Ionia County, as well as some customers near Stockbridge, aren't expected to be back on until around 11 tonight. The icy roads also forced one local school district to reschedule its prom. Northwest High School in Jackson County posted on its Facebook page saying the junior-senior prom that was scheduled for last night will now happen on Friday, May 4th at the same venue. The district did apologize but said safety had to come first. They also shared a post from the manager at the local men's warehouse saying all rentals have been updated with the new prom date. Well, you'll want to have the WLNS app handy so you can keep up with the latest weather conditions and even watch our newscasts live if your power does go out. You can download it on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Looking ahead for you now, in just a couple of hours, Democrats from across the state will gather to endorse their candidates for several positions in Michigan. The convention will happen from 9 to 5 at the Cobo Center in Detroit. State Democrats will endorse their candidate for Attorney General and Secretary of State, as well as candidates for the state Supreme Court. 6 News will be there, and you can get the latest updates tonight on 6 News at 6 and 6 News at 11. This is a breaking news alert from 6 News. Good morning, Mid Michigan. I'm Melissa Brennan. We start this morning with breaking news out of southwest Michigan. Police there say five children and an adult were killed in a massive hotel fire. Our affiliate WSBT reports the fire started shortly after 1.30 at the Cosmo Extended Stay Motel, which is just south of St. Joseph in Berrien County. When crews arrived, they say the building was engulfed in flames and smoke was pouring out of the building. Police say the children killed ranged in age from 2 to 10 years old, and the adult victim 
was 26. Authorities say other people, including a two-year-old child, were taken to an area hospital for their injuries. Officials are working to find out what started the fire and will continue to follow this story and bring you updates as we learn them. We're also working to learn more about a possible fire at an apartment complex in Lansing Township. This is a live look at the scene. The call came in around 7 o'clock this morning at the Windermere apartment complex on Willow Street. Our photographer Dan Ray says he saw smoke coming from two third floor apartments. We have calls and to learn more about what happened and if anyone was injured, we'll let you know when we learn more. Well, it's been a rough go of it for the Detroit Tigers. They're on a five game losing streak and last night's loss was so bad, Fred doesn't even have highlights. But that's okay because he has plenty of highlights from other games in morning sports, and that's in about 10 minutes. But right after the break, we'll show you a new kind of meat that's grown in a lab. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're going to take a look at some stories that might get you talking this morning, and we start on the basketball court. But not for game highlights. At the halftime of the games in between Texas Tech and Texas, there was a baby race on the court. Oh. One of the babies jumped out to an early lead, but then stopped. His parents and brother tried to persuade the baby over with a ball, but not in time. But hey, some of them didn't even get past the starting line. So I guess that's a victory in itself. And we have the winner right there. That is the cutest thing I have ever seen. <laughs> All right, moving over to California, where a woman flipped her way into the Guinness World Record book. Literally, uh -oh. this 86-year-old woman had held the title for oldest flying female trapeze artist since 2017. You could say she was a late bloomer in the sport. She didn't start until she was 78 years old, and a friend gave her a gift certificate to try it. She mm -hmm. even overcame a fear of heights to do it. Wow, she looks awesome for 86. I would have never have guessed. She's so brave. Yes. I, I don't think I could have. Do that, that right now. No, me neither. <laughs> and finally moving to Florida, something that would scare the daylights out of both Diane and I. A Miami Gardens man popped the hood of his car, opened to do some work, and found a boa constrictor in the engine. The man said he had no idea how long had it had been there, and he called animal control, but couldn't afford the $300 fee. His neighbor ended up coming over and pulled the snake out of the engine with a clothes hanger. No, I'm freaking out just watching this. I know, me too. I'm pretty sure I would just pass out in fear if I had a snake, if I open up my hood. Oh my gosh, I just have those, like the willies because, oh, it's so creepy. That makes me want to go check my car hood every time I'm about to get in my car. <laughs> I'm going to have someone else check it though first. Yeah, and that's a good neighbor too to come take a snake out of your car. Sorry, sorry neighbors, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, I'll definitely be taking applications for my neighbors on who would get snakes out of my yeah. car, but we're just going to hope there's never a snake in, in and around my engine or my car. Oh, I don't want to have to deal with that. But I don't mind dealing with the six-day forecast because we're not talking about a lot of snow. So we'll take a look at that coming up right after the break. Here's a live look in Jackson as your time is 623.